on with this. And these are the people that decide whether the business is to go or to replace. But let's just not take their word for it. I, I, I prefer the committee to exhibit two. And this is um, from the National Institute for Labor Relations Research. And it looks like this in your packages. Or is it, sorry, exhibit B. Uh, in aggregate, and over time, across the nation, right to work states and their citizens fare substantially more favorably than their forced unionism counterparts. Between 2001 and 2011, and that's what this data is looking at over that decade, the percentage growth in the total private sector non-farm employment for right to work states grew by 12.5%. Compare that to an anemic 3.5% growth for non-right to work states. Those opposed to right to work claim that wages in right to work states are lower. However, the fact of the matter is that per capita disposable income in 2011 and possibly adjusted for right to work states was over 7% higher than those workers in forest community states. And I would encourage the committee to just look down that list. I mean, every, no matter which metric you select, population growth, job creation, wage growth, Right to work states outpace their forced unionism counterparts time and time again. But the third reason is freedom of choice. And beyond, beyond the economic benefits that we just went through, however, 